So, one thing that I have noticed has been discussed a lot recently is what the IPC increase for Zen 5 will be. And I would be remiss if I didn't point out that last year I leaked a roadmap that directly suggested that while AMD was hoping to achieve a higher than 15% IPC increase, at the time back then, they were only confident in obtaining a 10 to 15% uplift over Zen 4 as the minimum. However, in that same video, I said that it's worth noting that in almost every instance in the past five years, AMD has managed to get a higher uplift in the final product than their internal Zen presentations presented in the run-up to the launch. Now, this is for a couple of reasons. The first being that I do honestly believe that AMD intentionally sandbags their numbers to throw the competition off before they officially unveil a product. Well, being honest enough to their partners to give them some reasonably close expectations for what the performance will be like when it does finally launch. Because, well, their partners do need to know ahead of time so that they can plan for a launch. For example, when AMD started talking about Zen 4 in some detail, they said that it would gain an around 8% IPC uplift over Zen 3. And what AMD was telegraphing to their partners with that specific number 8% is that it would be a higher uplift than Zen Plus, but not as high of an IPC uplift as Zen 2. And then, when they were ready, they eventually communicated 13%. And yeah, 13% is notably higher than 8%, but to an OEM, that's not that big of a difference. It doesn't really affect how you plan how you're going to market a product. It's just a pleasant surprise. However, there is a second reason AMD is always conservative in their early Zen presentations before a launch besides sandbagging. The other reason is actually a bit more jiggly. You see, AMD also goes from this to this because they aren't sure until around when the products are being manufactured exactly, underline that word, exactly, not roughly, exactly what they will be able to claim. Also underline that word, claim, because they do need to emphasize that. You see, contrary to what a lot of armchair experts think, IPC isn't really a science. It's a claim, a claim you can heavily manipulate to look better or worse, depending on what apps you bench or even what clock speeds you decide to benchmark these apps at for your comparison between architectures. You see, here on screen, AMD clocked both Zen 3 and Zen 4 at 4 GHz, and the results could have been notably different at 3 GHz, but I would suggest that AMD probably chose 4 GHz because that's where Zen 4 got a more preferable uplift. And then all of these apps, I, I mean, why are they using Deus Ex Mankind Divided? This game was six years old when Zen 4 launched. Well, the answer is that it made Zen 4 look good, but they had to include Cinebench, for example, even though it wasn't one of their good uplifts, because that is something that everybody uses in benchmarks, and it would have looked really shady if they wouldn't have included an app that's that popular in reviews. And so, while there really is an art to this, it is an art, not a science. If AMD chose to just use, like, Dolphin Bench, Deus Ex, and Watch Dogs, and then clocked their CPUs in the comparison at some weirdly specific clock speed like 4.32 gigahertz, then people would have called shenanigans. But if a round number, like 3, 4, or 5 gigahertz for the clock speed, and at least a dozen apps, including some of the most popular ones, maybe not all of them, but some of the most popular ones, eh, then it's not really line or cherry picking per se, but it is definitely something you can goose, like I've just explained, and I do expect AMD to do so with Zen 5, so they don't look like they're behind Intel very much or at all in IPC this year when Intel announces what Arrow Lakes claimed IPC is. But at the end of the day, the IPC range that I leaked over half a year ago for Zen 5 I'm about to stand by that range today because I've had a few additional sources that I reached out to that I didn't consult last year. Dog Jesse is occasionally very helpful, especially when it comes to policing my girlfriend's cat. But if I'm being entirely honest, she spends most of the day 
doing absolutely nothing that helps anybody. And that's really the same as your PC. Yeah, you might love using it to play games or render or model things, but all that horsepower, most of the time, it's probably not being used to do anything, much like my pets. And well, that can change today if you just use the Salad app. This piece of content is brought to you by the Salad app, which is a free PC app that puts your computer's passive power or your home's bandwidth to work earning rewards like Discord Nitro, PayPal gift cards, Visa prepaid debit cards, and games and more. That's right, whether you have untapped bandwidth at your house via an internet connection that doesn't always need to be utilized 100% to stream Netflix, or you have a PC that ideally has an RTX 3060 or better, you can get rewarded for simply sharing your computing power or your bandwidth with the rest of the world while you're not using it. So when you're not using your PC or your internet connection to game or stream Netflix, start up the salad app, become a salad chef, and cook up some rewards, and also cook up some support for this channel. Seriously, it's entirely free to click that link in the description and download the app. And if you do so, you can just use your gaming PC to earn rewards while you're not gaming, or your modeling, rendering PC. Any powerful hardware you have, including its internet connection, can be made much more useful. And again, if you go and click on that link in the description and download Salad, it helps this channel so much. So support yourself earning some rewards on the side and support this channel by downloading the Salad app through the link in the description today. All right, so like I said in the first part of this video, I've been provided with more information on Zen 5. I want to put this on screen here. And yeah, the first source says that currently they, they mean AMD, are telling partners to expect Zen 5 to achieve an IPC increase of around 17%, but that also the chosen IPC claim depends on what marketing thinks they can get away with. And, oh, they also wanted to note to me that the average IPC uplift will not be close to 40%, and they cannot believe they have to say that, and usually remind me of things like this, every generation in the lead up to a launch when the silliest leaks get thrown around. Now, a second source here told me that in a recent presentation from AMD, they were told to expect an IPC increase for Zen 5 that's in the teens or low to mid 20s, but that the FP workloads will often be much harder. And this person said that they're not sure, but it seems like AMD has quite a bit of wiggle room this time around, and that they have an honest impression that they'll try to fluff the marketed IPC enough to look close to what Intel announces for Lion Cove in Aerolic. Oh, and this person was also told that both client and server Zen 5 are targeting quarter 3 2024 for launch. Now, a third source here really opened up to me and said the original low ball goal for Zen 5's IPC uplift was 20%. Low ball meaning that they thought it would be easy to at least hit that and they were hoping for much higher if they put in the work. But it wasn't that easy. They ran into power issues. The shift to 4 nanometer from 3 nanometer for the standard variant hurt clock speeds more than they expected. And at one point, they were concerned it might only get efficiency and IPC increases in the low double digits. And I want to be clear about this. When I say it hurt clock speeds more than they expected, I'm not saying you should be worried like Zen 5 is going to have subs 5 gigahertz clock speeds or something. Now, I had wild expectations. Like, they were hoping for like 6.5 or 7 gigahertz and... Yeah, they don't think they're going to get even remotely close to that, but it should still be decent clock speeds. Uh, in fact, this person said that they had so many issues, they briefly considered downgrading Strix to have Zen 4 with RDNA 3.5 to ensure that APU launched on time. And possibly part of the reason Zen 5 Strix is launching in the second half of this year is because of Zen 5 issues. But here's the thing. Recently, this person has heard that Zen 5 has some decent optimism behind it. Finally, however, this person hasn't been on the project for months, so they're not able to say exactly how well it will turn out, but they are fairly confident in what I have been saying for a while now, that it will achieve a 14 to 26% IPC uplift, that you'll get modest clock speed increases in some SKUs, but don't expect it to be an across-the-board large uplift, and that we are safe to assume it is going to be decently efficient, which I am loving 
hearing all of this, especially as I was hearing some fairly pessimistic things a few months ago. Not hugely pessimistic things. I always expected Zen 5 to be another decent uplift and to be something that preempts the launch of Arrow Lake and has a few tricks up its sleeve that gives it massive performance increases in specific apps. But I have to admit, in January, when I was ready to double down that it was being delayed due to issues, I was a bit concerned that this thing might not be that much more exciting than Zen 4. Now I think it will be. This is going to be a very exciting architecture and one that from the sounds of it will easily be ready to launch in quarter three, which is also awesome to hear. And you know, if anybody's disappointed about what I'm leaking today, it's just because you bought into the usual clickbaiters and overhypers that it feels like I have to dispel every generation. And I want to be clear about those people too. The people at AMD are exhausted by them. It feels like no matter what they announce, some people are always disappointed because they are expecting an unrealistic number. So just know that if you're following the people over hyping things every generation, those people are hurting AMD. But you know, here's the thing that's also exciting moving forward is that I do consistently hear that Zen 6 is having more effort put into it than was initially planned. And well, that costs AMD some money to make up for some of the pitfalls that they've run into with Zen 5, that also means that they're probably going to make up for those pitfalls. So if Zen 5 ends up 5 to 10% weaker than AMD was hoping for, it sounds like Zen 6 might be 5 to 10% stronger. And so either way, at the end of 2025 or maybe the first half of 2026, AMD's performance targets are going to be probably right where they were supposed to be by the time they had Zen 6 out, which is awesome. And so then the final question becomes, is Intel Arrow Lake doomed? And, well, I gotta say that I do stand by my opinion that I put out there recently that Intel really does have an opening here. If they manage to finally pull off a competent launch with a product, Arrow Lake, that finally stops making the mistakes Intel has typically or almost entirely consistently been making with every prior release for the past five years. You see, the fact that I'm hearing things like, fluff the marketed IPC from people at AMD tells me that AMD is legitimately concerned that Intel will have a faster big core and arrow like than what Zen 5 will have this year. And so that may actually be a very real performance advantage for Team Blue. But at the same time, the fact that AMD thinks they can goose their numbers to look close to Arrow Lake tells me that any single threading performance lead Arrow Lake has over Zen 5 is unlikely to be a difference that's as massive as like the difference between Golden Cove and Zen 3, which could easily be 10 or 20% higher. It doesn't seem like you're going to get that type of a blowout in single threaded performance with Arrow Lake over Zen 5. And so, yeah, look, Intel may have a lead at the end of this year with Arrow Lake, but it's unlikely to be crazy huge and AMD will still likely win in some departments. I don't think Arrow Lake is going to have a clean kill, therefore, on performance with Zen 5, and so Intel has an opening, but they will only win, in my opinion, if everything else is fixed, like I suggested in a recent video. This includes, number one, ensuring that their LGA 1851 platform ships early to avoid expensive day one markups like we often see with the launches of new platforms. Intel cannot afford to do that. AMD will have well-established and marked down AM5 offerings on the market. And number two, Intel also needs to announce that they're going to support LGA 1851 for at least three generations. Otherwise, people will look at Arrow Lake look at Zen 5 and go, they're not that different in performance. And you know what? AMD is going to let me upgrade to at least Zen 6 or maybe even Zen 7. So why would I get Arrow Lake and be on a dead platform? And then number three, they also need to not push the power consumption dial too hard this time around. After all, if Arrow Lake is only going to win in performance by an okay amount, if win at all, it won't matter if someone needs to buy a fucking refrigerator to cool this thing. Intel cannot keep doing this, especially because they will launch Arrow Lake after Zen 5, and they're using TSMC 3 nanometer, not TSMC 4 nanometer like AMD is, and so it's going to be more expensive to produce Arrow Lake. And for those wondering, when Intel uses their own nodes, it doesn't really seem to be saving them that much money. And so, well, there you go. Yes, Intel may have a performance win over Zen 5, but it's a may have, and it's unlikely to be a meteoric 
win in that department. And because of that, because they also have some headwinds, launching later, having a more expensive product, they have to have everything else perfect. They have to make sure their platform isn't overpriced. They have to make sure that people don't feel worried that there won't be a decent upgrade path a few years after it's out. And they also have to make sure that if you buy their product, you're not losing in efficiency. It costs more to make, it's coming out later, but it is just as efficient or more efficient and it is more powerful. That is what Intel has to succeed with here because while Zen 5 doesn't look like a Zen one moment it looks pretty damn good well that is just about going to do it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to like it to share it to comment below for the algorithm and also check that you're subscribed to the moore's law is dead youtube channel and ring that bell button and then if you want to show extra support you can of course support our sponsors like the salad app below in the description or you can also support moore's law is dead on Patreon, where you'll gain access to early ad-free versions of Broken Silicon at the proper tiers. And even the bottom tiers will get access to the Discord and exclusive pieces of content like Die Shrink. A new one is about to drop. They never have any ads. You can join for $2 a month and get access to a catalog of hundreds of episodes, in addition to other little products that are in the back catalog as well. But for everybody else, no matter what, thank you for watching.